Hi there, Laura Wilson from Gold Star Work here. Today I'm going to show you how to paint some popsicles. Or where we come from, we call them ice blocks. I'm going to show you how to make this three assorted melon flavour and this strawberry and pineapple flavour, blackberry and yogurt flavour, and a chocolate and raspberry one. Now fair warning, if you've got kids and you start painting these ice blocks, they're going to want you to make them. I'm going to show you a variety of techniques for making these ice blocks. I'm going to show you how to do the salt and shadows and lifting out and splatters and using the white of the paper and using masking fluid. Now there's lots of different techniques in there for you to learn some new tricks and skills. So let's get started. I'm just going to be using a 300 gram weight paper, watercolour paper, so that's a good thickness. That means that it won't buckle when I put the water on. And I've just taped it onto this piece of cardboard here. And I know that the paintings I'm going to do, I want to be the size of a card, so I'm going to just draw out the size so I know what size I want to make them. And that way I can make sure my cards will fit a regular size envelope. And that the picture that I'm doing will fit into a card size. So first of all I've drawn in my ice block shapes. We're going to start off with these ones here. The nice simple design. So we're going to start off with these ones here and they're going to be triple melon ice blocks. And we're going to start off with a round brush, number 10, and put some clean water on it. And I'm just going to paint the ice block in with the water. I'm going to use some lemon yellow first. I'm going to put the lemon yellow in at the top and a little bit down the bottom. And then we're going to mix in some cardamom red with the yellow to make an orange. Nice rock melon colour. And then we're going to put that in which 
just got some water on my brush because my paper was drying a little bit. And I'm going to get some of that cardamom red on its own for the watermelon bit and I'm just going to drop that in, in there. And my paper is on a bit of an angle so it's running down quite a lot. Normally I would do this flat. And I'm going to grab a bit of the sap green. And I'm going to put a little stripe of that in there for the princess, for the prince melon, the green melon. I think I might want to make the bottom of it a little bit of a richer orange. So I just added a bit more red into my orange mixture and I'm going to put that in there. And I'm going to wait for that one to dry before I do any more on it. And I can do the other ones. I can wet them all down at the same time and do them all at once. So I get my yellow, put my yellow in at the top and a little bit at the bottom. And grab my orange. Red. And grab some of that sap green. It's a very watery sap green because I don't want it to take over the rest of the picture. So while the paint's all wet, I'm going to grab some salt and I'm going to just sprinkle a little bit on here. Now that one's just a very fine table salt, but I can also use some rock salt, which is bigger. So that's much bigger. And I can put just a few on there. You can see the salt on there drying. You can see how the paint is absorbing into the salt. So when it's dry, it'll leave little icy patterns. You can see them a bit already forming on there. So while we're waiting for the salt to dry on those other ice blocks, we, I'm going to show you how I'm going to do the nuts on this chocolate raspberry with nuts one. And we're going to use some masking fluid on that one. And when you use masking fluid, you want to use an old brush because it's pretty hard on your brushes. You can put um, soap on your brush first. That sometimes helps when washing it out. And you're just going to dip my little paintbrush. And I'm just going to go and dot the masking fluid on where I want the nuts to go. What the masking fluid will do, it'll stop the paint washes that I'm going to put over. And you'll end up with these white patches that I can then make into the nuts. So make sure your patterns for your nuts is pretty random. And you want some around the edges. There. 
I think that'll do. Now you've got to make sure with masking fluid that it's completely dry before you do anything else. So that's why we're doing that now. And the salt's now dry on this one, so we can rub that off. You can see the patterns that the salt has made, giving it that icy kind of look. Now we can carry on painting this one now. now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to darken up the sides. So I'm going to use the same colours. Use the red. And the lemon yellow. And the orange. And a little bit of the sap green. And that just darkens up that edge a bit. And we're just turning this around here. So I want to tidy up this edge here. Paper towel. Now I quite like the colours in these two, but I think I might like to darken this one up. Because this one is bigger and it's more in the foreground. So I'm going to grab some of my same colours again. My lemon yellow. And I'm just going to make the colour a little bit stronger. So I've got a little bit of lemon yellow on there and then I used water on my brush to smooth it out and you're going to get a bit of the orange I'm going to do the same, get some water smooth it out and this time I'm going to put a little bit of water on here because that set green is a really strong colour and I don't want it to overpower everything else in the picture I'll grab a bit more of that orange to blend in with that green down there. And I'm going to tidy up this edge a little bit as well. I'm 
Okay, Danielle, are you ready to do the little sticks on those ice blocks? First of all, I'm going to go in with the yellow ochre. And there's just a little bit of stick on that one. And I've just used some of that burnt sienna I've watered it right down and I put a little bit of red in it as well. So I'm just going to darken up this edge even more. And you can see my pencil lines still because I drew them quite dark so you could see them on the camera. And I wouldn't normally do them that dark. So when you're drawing your ice blocks in you don't have to draw that dark. You can be a lot lighter with your pencil marks and then you won't get them showing up so much in the final painting. Now I'm going to grab my small brush again, my number zero, and I'm just going to do those little details. On the stick. And then we can move on and do the shadows around that, those ones because those ones are also sitting on the table. And get my shadow colour that we made with the Burnt Sienna and the Ultramarine. And I'm just going to with a clean brush I'm around same way and spread some water where I want the shadows to go Then I'll get my colour and I'm going to start where I want the darkest shadows. And as I get less water on my paint on my brush, they'll fade out a bit. Now I've just got some water on my brush because that colour is still pretty strong. I'm just going to fade my shadow out 
even further. And I'm going to get a dry paper towel and just soften. So I'm just going to blot where I want to soften those shadows a bit. bit of a hard line there so I'm going to soften that out so now it's all dry and I'm just going to go back in and I'm just going to tidy up that little edge there And that one's finished. So now we can move on to the next one. Okay, so now we're going to do the pineapple and strawberry ice block. For this one, we're going to use lemon yellow, cadmium red, cadmium yellow, and some ultramarine blue. Yay, I said the right colour that time. I don't know why, but I seem to have a mental block when it comes to saying cadmium, and I say, keep saying cardamom instead. So when I say that, just ignore me. It's supposed to be cadmium. So again, I'm going to start off with some clean water. Well, it's supposed to be clean water. That one's got a slight yellow tinge because I didn't quite wash my brush off properly. We're going to cover that whole thing. And I'm going to start off with the lemon yellow where the pineapple bits are going to go. So I'm just going to drop in a little bit where I think the pineapple bits are going to go. And then I'm going to get some of that cadmium red and I'm going to put that in Again, my paint's running because it's not lying flat, so I'm just going to mop that up a bit so it doesn't go over the whole picture. You won't have that problem because your one will be sitting flat. I couldn't get a good camera angle with my paper sitting flat, so that's why I tipped it up a bit. I'm going to get the ultramarine blue and I'm just going to mix some of that ultramarine blue with my cadmium red. I'm going to use quite a lot of red because I don't want a purple, I just want a darker red, if you can see that. So it's just making a darker red, it looks a bit like burnt sienna. Now, I'm not entirely happy with that colour. I think I'd like to go more red. I'm going to get some rose here and I'm going to drop in a little bit of rose to just richen up that red a bit for the strawberry colour.
Now I'm going to wash my brush out and I'm going to get my paper towel and with my clean brush, and a th they call it a thirsty brush, I'm just going to lift a bit of paint out where I think the light would be hitting the shape of that ice block. And I'm just going to mop up that bit at the bottom. As I said, you won't have that problem because you won't have um, your paper on an angle. It'll be flat, so you won't have that problem with it running. I'm going to get some of my cardamom yellow, and I'm just going to drop that in as well, where the pineapple bits were going, because I've kind of lost my yellow there. And the colour was quite strong. So I'm also going to lift a little bit of that out. So the idea is I want a mottled kind of effect for the pineapple to make it look more like bits of pineapple just got a bit more of that lemon yellow on my brush I'm going to use a little bit of the red on its own and this paper is actually getting quite dry now, it's only just a little bit damp so it's not running the way it was before. This, this ice block is going to be a bit melty. I'm going to use a little bit of the clear water. And let that just run into there. A little bit of the red. I'm going to grab a bit of that rose as well and let that go into that water as well. So this ice block is lying flat on the ground so when that's dry we can put in the shadows to show that it's on the ground. Just using the, that clear water again, just reinstating those highlights. Now on our pineapple and strawberry one, the colour of the red has faded out a lot. So I'm going to go over that a bit. It's, Paper is still a little bit damp, but it's mostly dry, so it's not going to bleed very much. So I'm going to start off with the permanent rose. And 
and then I'm going to, just going to soften those edges with a damp brush. Just trying to brighten up those colours a bit. I'm going to use some of the Camium Red and I'm just going to go around this area here that is the side in the bottom of the ice block and I'm going to put a little bit of that in here as well. Imagining that the light is coming this way and so this side of the ice block will be a little bit darker. And again I'm just using a damp brush with nothing on it just to soften up any bits that I want to be soft instead of hard edged. I'm going to grab a little bit of the lemon yellow. And put, oops, it's running. Just put a little bit more of that lemon yellow up there. Yeah, a bit more of the permanent rose and put some of that around the edge as well. Okay, I think I'll leave that to dry and see what it looks like next. So this one's looking pretty good now, it's all dry. Now I'm going to do the stick. So for the stick I'm going to use some yellow ochre. And I'm going to wet the stick just like we did with the ice block. And get some yellow ochre and put that in over the stick. And that colour we made earlier that I didn't like, that was like a burnt sienna, will be good for the stick. So that was the red with some ultramarine in it. And I'm just refining the shape there. And 
we've got a bit more of that yellow ochre. So I'm going to let that stick dry a bit before I do the next bit. Now that sticks dry, I'm going to use a smaller brush. This is a zero, just a round brush. I'm just going to do a little bit of detail work, not too much. And I'm just using that colour that we made with the red and the ultramarine. And I'm just suggesting a few little lines on the ice block stick like you see on your ice block sticks. And that's all that stick needs, I think. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put in our little shadow to make it look like it's sitting down on the table. And you do manage to make sure that this is really dry before you do the shadow part because we're going to be using some more clear water and going around the ice block. So you don't want that colour of the ice block to bleed into your shadow colour. And to make the shadow colour, we're going to use some ultramarine and some burnt sienna. Or I could just use that mix that we had before, but I'd run out, so I'm going to use some burnt sienna, so I don't have to remix the other colour. So I'm just going to mix that with some of the blue. I'm going to need more blue. And it's going to give us a grey. See? It looks quite black on there, but when we put it on the paper, it'll be more grey. So we've got our wet area around here. That's quite dark. I don't need a big shadow. And I don't need it really dark, so I'm just grabbing a bit more water. And I'm fading that out a little bit. If you watched my one on seashells, you'll see how I did the shadow there. And we're using the same method. So now I'm just using the tissue and I'm just softening up the edge a bit. While I was mixing the paint, some of the water dried a bit. I'll just put a bit more water on there. I use it to show again, soften that shadow up. Now, this bit here is where the ice block is melting. So I actually need some of the shadow around the actual ice block itself.
going to do the same up the top here. I'm going to have less shadow up the top. I could call that one done now, or I could add some splashes and things if you want. And that's what I think I'll do, but I can't do the splashes while the cam while the canvas is sitting up because uh, the splatters will start to run. Okay, so what I've done is I've put some paper towels down around on the other bits of paper there because I don't want the splashes to go on my other pictures. And I've also made a little shape of this ice block here and I'm gonna grab a little bit of blue tack and I'm gonna stick that on because I don't want the splashes to go all over my ice block as well So I'm going to have a look what brush I want to use. And I think for this one I'm going to use a toothbrush. And I'll put the toothbrush in the water. And I'm going to use the colours that I used on the ice block. So I'm going to get some of that cadmium red. And water it down quite a lot. And then I'm just going to flick a little bit around there. And then I'm going to get some of the lemon yellow and water that one down. There's still a little bit of red on my brush, so it's gone a bit orange looking. Some of that cadmium yellow. And depending on how watery and how much paint you've got on your brush will depend on how much ends up in the paper. I'm going to grab a little bit of that permanent rose that we used. And I feel like I want to put a little bit of splatter of the shadow colour, but I'm going to make it a little bit bluer. And I'm going to water it down quite a lot because it was quite a strong colour. And I'm going to put that more down the bottom there. Then I'm going to get my spray bottle of water and I'm gonna spray it a little bit just to let the colours are dry now so I'm gonna take off my mask and show you that little ice block there. So that one's finished now. The next one we're going to do is a blackberry and yogurt one. So in this one I'm going to show you how to use the white of the paper to make the yogurt colour. And we're going to do exactly the same method as all the others to start with. We're going to cover them with water.
And I'm going to get some permanent rose, which is this nice pink colour. Put a bit of water in it. And I'm going to just start off with the permanent rose. Just put a bit more water on there because the paper was drying out too fast. And then I'm going to get my ultramarine and I'm going to mix it in with my permanent rose to make a lovely purple. And these are going to be the berries. The blackberries. So the permanent rose is the stain that the berries is making in the yogurt. And then the purple berries are buried inside the yogurt, giving those darker bits. That's the idea anyway. I'm just going to grab a little bit more of my permanent rose there. And I'm leaving some of the paper white, so I'm not covering the whole thing. And then we leave that one to dry as well. And for this one, I'm going to put in the sides of the ice block and I'm going to use my shadow colour of the ultramarine blue and the burnt sienna for that. And it's quite a transparent colour, so it will show those colours coming through underneath. It's quite a hard edge on there, so I'm going to smooth that out a little bit. And the same with this one.
Okay, so now I'm going to do this little stick. I'm going to use the yellow ochre there. And a little bit of the burnt sienna with the red mixed into it and watered right down. And then I'm going to do that top stick in the same way. And with the yellow ochre. And a little bit of that burnt sienna. And again, we'll come in and do a couple of details when it's dry. So this little stick's dry now, so I'm going to come in with the burnt sienna. And just do a couple of little details. So you'll notice the side of the ice block that I've made to show you've got the front of the ice block, you've got the bottom of the ice block, and the side of the ice block. I'm also showing the stick on that side so it all makes sense. So you don't want to show the side of the stick on the other side of what you've got the ice block showing because that wouldn't happen. And this bit here is going to be a little bit more in the shade where the ice block stick goes in. It'll be kind of dented in a bit so I'm just going to add a little bit of that shadow colour there. Maybe just a little bit on that bottom bit there. So I'm going to do the same on this top one with the details with the burnt sienna. Do the side of the ice block stick. And just a couple of little lines on the ice block stick. And that one's all finished. So the masking fluid is now dry on this one. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to use the permanent rose again for the raspberry on this chocolate raspberry with nuts. And this time I haven't wet the paper because I want to get these shapes of the chocolate so I'm just going to paint in the raspberry bit down the bottom Yeah, and this one, the, the raspberry bit is the ice block part, and then it's been dipped in chocolate. So I'm going to do the salt trick again on this, just on this bottom bit, to make it look more like it's not a solid colour, and that it's more like something frozen. So I'm going to lie that flat, and I'm just going to sprinkle some of that salt on there. I'm going to do the same thing as I did with the last one. I'm going to do a mixture. And I'm putting quite a lot of salt on there this time because I'd made a pretty strong colour. As you can see there. And I'm just going to let that soak in and dry. So now we're going to do this chocolate raspberry one. I'm going to take the salt off here. Tuck 
on there pretty well. So now we're going to do this chocolate and raspberry one. We've taken all the salt off and now I'm going to try and make that chocolate colour. So I'm going to use some burnt umber and I'm also going to use some of the burnt sienna. So I'm going to get the burnt sienna here and mix some of that burnt umber to get a rich dark brown. And now I'm just going to paint my chocolate in right over the top of the masking tape. And I'm doing it pretty thick. And I'm going to leave the odd little white bit where the light's catching the chocolate. It's going to be hard to see if I've got enough lights in there while the masking fluid is still on because it's hard to tell. But you can see what the masking fluid is doing. It's resisting the paint so the paint doesn't go underneath it. So I'm going to leave that there and let that dry. So while I'm waiting for that to dry, I can put in the stick. Using that yellow ochre again, and a little bit of that burnt sienna. And because it's a raspberry flavour this time on the bottom there. I'm just going to try something with a little bit of the burnt sienna in the cadmium yellow and I'm just going to drop in some tiny seeds now that's too brown for me I'm going to put in some more of the yellow in fact I've just made I've just made a yellow ochre colour, so I could have just used the yellow ochre on its own. And I'm just going to put a few, what might be those little raspberry seeds in there. I'm just going to suggest them. Using my finger to fade them out a bit. Okay. So that feels pretty dry. I'm going to make sure my finger's dry. And then I'm going to peel off 
the masking tape. So that's all gone now. I'm going to do my nuts next. Oops. So I think I'm going to use my yellow ochre and put some yellow ochre. I'm just going to dot it around. And then I'm going to get some of my cadmium yellow and I'm going to put some of that in. While we're waiting for those nuts to dry, I'm going to get my small brush again and just fill in the rest of the details on the stick. You'll notice on the sticks that I'm doing more colour at the top where the ice block is, more of the dark. And then just a few little lines to show the woodness of the stick, if that's a word. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little shadow on the edge of the chocolate to show that it's sticking up a little bit. From the edge of the ice block. I'm not doing it on both sides. I'm just staying on this side to do that with. I'm going to get a little bit of my rose. And I'm just going to tidy up this edge a little bit. Oh, too much water on my brush there. I don't want a hard line on the ice block itself, so I'm just adding some water in there. And I'm just going to darken up this corner. Since I've got a shadow on this side, I'm going to make this side of the ice block a little bit darker. I'm going to get my shadow colour and I'm just going to pop in a few little shadows around the nut. Too much. Big blob. And that one's all finished too. 
And there's one last thing. When they're completely dry, I'm going to go in with my white rubber. My white rubber got a bit wet, so I'm just drying it off. I spilled the water. <laughs> so I'm going to go in with my white rubber, and I'm going to rub out any pencil lines that are going to come out. And I'm not pressing really hard. I'm just pressing lightly. So I don't want to lift any paint accidentally. But being watercolour, sometimes those pencil lines, even underneath the paint, will come out or fade anyway. I'm going to make these ones into cards. I'm going to be making these ones into greeting cards. And I've showed you step by step how to do them. So you'll be able to make your own greeting cards as well, your own ice block pictures. And I'd love to see what you've been doing. So don't forget to share them with me. I'll see you all next week. Bye.